My friends, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Now, normally on January 1 of each year, I look ahead at the year that's coming up, and I name the year. I look at what will be and what I hope to have happen that year, and I give that year a name. So I've named years. This will be the year of transition, or this will be the year of new beginnings, or this will be the year of joy. And what I didn't anticipate this year on January 1 of 2020 is that this year would have be the year that changed its name. And this year has become for me the year of being sick and tired. I don't know about you, but I know for myself, since January, especially since March, since the pandemic began, there have been increasingly many things that I've become sick and tired over. I'm sick and tired of COVID-19. I'm sick and tired of people being sickened by it. I'm sick and tired of people dying from COVID-19. I'm sick and tired of people politicizing things. I'm sick and tired of the lying, the deceit, the manipulation, the greed in our country. I'm sick and tired of the divisions we face in our country. I am sick and tired, my friends, of racial injustice. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I mean that. Maybe you're in the same boat I am. We're just sick and tired, and we're tired of being sick and tired. And today's the day that we do something about it. It's a service of lament and healing. It's a chance for us to lay before the Lord those things that we're sick and tired of and invite God into those places to provide healing and hope so we can have a new beginning, a new way forward. We're just done being sick and tired. In a little bit, we're going to look at Bartimaeus' story in Mark chapter 10. We're going to wade through that story and discover some things that Bartimaeus may have been sick and tired about. And what did he do about those things that he was sick and tired over? And what do we learn from Bartimaeus' story and how God intervened in Bartimaeus' life that we can take into this moment today? I'm also going to invite you into... Uh, reflecting on three important questions. And as I said before in the beginning, I encourage you to take a piece of paper out or you write in your utensil or maybe your phone, you write in your phone or an iPad or just make a mental note of your answers to these questions. There are important questions that elicit and pull out of us those things that we might be sick and tired about. So here are the three questions I invite you right now to take seriously, to think about, What's deep in your heart? And what's been your experience in 2020? The first question is, what are the losses you've experienced this year? What are some losses, large and small? Maybe people have died in your life. But maybe you've lost other things. You've lost dreams and hopes. You've lost a job. You've lost income. You've lost... Maybe you graduated from high school and you lost the graduation experience, but what are the losses you've experienced? Because of the pandemic, but just because of life itself. What are the losses, large and small, you've experienced this year? And take a moment and write down that list. It might be a small list or it might be a large list. But loss is important to reflect on because these are places of sadness and grief. The second question is, what are situations in life that are painful right now? Maybe you're in physical pain because of illness, but maybe there's relationship pain in your life today. Maybe there's pain in other parts of your life. Maybe it's pain in your professional life, that the professional life that you're in right now is just painful, it's difficult, it's hard. What are situations that are painful for you right now? now and write those out make a note of those things and lastly how would you finish this sentence it's not right that it's not right that there's racial injustice it's not right that people are still starving in our world it's not right that our world experiences drought it's not right that kids suffer abuse it's not right that there's domestic violence in our world it's not right what is it for you it's not right that 
And these are things that bring up righteous indignation in you. I encourage you, again, to write down your answers, your losses, your places of pain, and your places where you find yourself righteously indignant. It's not right that this or that is happening. And put that aside for a moment. We'll come back to that list as we enter time of prayer with Pastor Steve. And we're going to use that list as a way for us to be before the Lord. We, to, to, as Lamentations tells us, to pour out our hearts like water, to pour out honestly these things and lay them before the Lord. These are, Lord, these are our losses. These are our sources of pain. This is where we are righteously indignant. We're just angry about this. What is it for you? And then in prayer, we will offer those in our prayers. But lay that aside for a moment and let's examine Bartimaeus and Bartimaeus's story recorded in Mark chapter 10, verses 46 through 53. It was read prior to this, but I invite you to uh, read along again as we just wade through the story briefly. Bartimaeus has his own pains. He has his own losses. He has his own anger. He's facing a difficult situation. And what does he do about it? And what Bartimaeus does about it is what we do about it too in our own places of loss and lament and pain and grief and anger. Bartimaeus, it says, let me just read it again for us. They came to Jericho as Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city. A blind man, Bartimaeus, that is the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. We're going to stop there for a moment. Think about what's happening. We don't know how old Bartimaeus is. We just know Bartimaeus is a man in Jericho who lives there. Maybe he was born there, but we do know Bartimaeus lives in Jer Jericho and he's blind and he's begging because in the first century there's no social safety net for people that are disabled like Bartimaeus. He has to fend for himself, and the way he does that is he's begging. Maybe every day for the last week or year or years, maybe since he was born, maybe he was born blind, maybe he was blinded later on by an accident. We don't know that, but at some point he's been blinded, and because of that, he's left begging. This is not the way Bartimaeus wanted his life to turn out to be. Maybe his mom and dad didn't want Bartimaeus' life to turn out this way. Maybe they would add their own lament. But why is our son blind and left begging on the street? No parent wants their son or daughter to live that life. Timaeus, Bartimaeus' dad, did not want his son Bartimaeus. His dream was not that Bartimaeus would sit on the street and beg for a living. But Timaeus had different dreams for his son, potentially, before Bartimaeus was born, as all parents do for their kids. And Bartimaeus is in a situation where it's unpleasant for him. Can you imagine the humiliation of every day begging for bread or for resources from everybody that walks by? This is Bartimaeus' lot in life. There is anger within this potentially there is there is a pain in that for Bartimaeus this is not the way I'd hoped life would turn out when I know other people can live lives differently than me Bartimaeus may be thinking and think of the losses that Bartimaeus has experienced over the course of his life because of his blindness because of the situation and poverty that he finds himself and now you add insult to injury. Bartimaeus is crying out for help. Finally, somebody, Jesus, the son of God, the son of David, is in our town, Jericho. I, today's the day. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, Bartimaeus said. I'm going to ask for some help. And he instead, he, when he asks for help, he cries out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. People rebuke him and tell him to be quiet. So insult to injury is he's not taken seriously. 
He's treated as second class. He's told he's not worth the, the audience of the Son of God, Jesus of Nazareth. Be quiet, Bartimaeus. And can you imagine Bartimaeus' pain of being treated as a second class citizen? The pain that Bartimaeus may have felt of being silenced. Your voice does not matter, Bartimaeus. But Bartimaeus does not allow the pain that he experienced or the rebuke that he experienced as well to stop him. Because Bartimaeus is sick and tired of being sick and tired. And this one Jesus, the one source of hope and healing is in his midst. And he's going to do everything he can to get to him. All Bartimaeus can do is cry out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Now, the son of David term, by the way, just as an aside, Bartimaeus knows something about Jesus. Jesus is not just a nice guy. He's the son of David. This is a messianic title. He knows Jesus is bigger than himself. He's bigger than anyone. God, Jesus, can do anything because he is God in the flesh. He is the son of David. And Bartimaeus cries out from the depth of his being, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on me. The word in Greek is eleison. It's why we sing or we pray at the end of each petition on Sundays, Lord, have mercy. Either it's the, the Kyrie, Kyrie eleison, Lord, have mercy. But many of us just simply mouth the words and we vocalize the word, Lord, have mercy. But Bartimaeus, this is not a vocalization of words coming out of his vocal cords. This was coming from the depth of his being because he's sick and tired of being sick and tired. He's tired of the suffering. He's tired of grieving. He's tired of the pain. He's tired of being rich, righteously indignant. He's, ti he's tired. He's tired of not being taken seriously. He's tired of being silenced. He's tired of being people walking right past him and not giving him anything, not giving him even the time of day. He's tired. And from the depth of his being, he says, Lord, have mercy. It says, he shouted all the more. It wasn't a polite, Lord, have mercy. It was, Jesus, son of David, Lord, have mercy. And that's the place where we present ourselves before the Lord. We present our losses our laments, our pains, our anger. And it's not a polite, Lord, have mercy. We say, God, Lord, have mercy on these things. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. How long, oh Lord, will you forget us? How long? Lord, have mercy. And if that's the only prayer we pray from the death of our being, a broken heart, a contrite spirit, that's enough. God is not looking for polite, prayerful people. He's looking for honest people who lament, who are angry, but who also invite the Lord's intervention into those places of pain and sadness and anger. Because that's what Bartimaeus does. Bartimaeus is not just left with, Lord have mercy, will you just somebody, Lord have mercy, and he's crying out over and over and over again. But he's in the presence of the Son of David, the Son of God, Jesus, our Messiah. And it goes on, Jesus stopped Jesus hears Bartimaeus. He hears his cry. Jesus stopped, it says, and said, call him. So they called the blind man. Cheer up on your feet. He's calling you. Throwing aside his cloak, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. How does a blind man do this? He can't see his steps in front of him. You know what's directing him? His heart. 
His desire is getting him off his feet. His desire is throwing the clothes off. His desire is finding his way. Bartimaeus is a desire. Bartimaeus' desire is finding his way through the crowd. Come, whatever obstacle is in the way, it's going to be out of his way because his desire is to be in the presence of Jesus. Jesus has heard his cry for mercy. He knows his pain. He knows somebody finally takes me seriously. Jesus hears me, and I'm going to do anything I can do, even if I can't see the steps in front of me, to get to this one. I don't even know where he's at, but my heart will direct me to him because my heart knows, because my heart's like a magnet. My soul's like a magnet to the one who loves me, to the one who desires healing for me, to the one who gives me hope. Jesus, I will find my way. He jumps to his feet and comes to Jesus, it says. And Jesus asks this simple question, a profound question. What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. That's a big ask. That's a bold request. I just want to see. Rabbi, I want to see. That's an act. That's a, that's a request of faith. A request that knows more about who Jesus is and what Jesus can do in that moment for Bartimaeus. He has nothing to lose. Jesus has already heard his cry for mercy. Why out? What? Let's ask for the biggest thing I can. I just want to see. He didn't ask for something small. He didn't ask for a coin. He didn't ask for a piece of bread. He asked for sight. I just want to see. So if Jesus is in front of you right now, he hears, he knows. He knows your losses, your grief. He understands them. He takes them seriously. And he knows your anger. He knows the pain. He knows where you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. And today's the day. That Jesus looks at you as he looked at Bartimaeus. He looks at me and he says, what do you want me to do for you? And you say, I want to. What is it that you would respond with? What do you want? What is it that you really want? Let me think of the possibilities that Bartimaeus can have now that he can see. The doors that can open and the life that he can lead because it's a new beginning for Bartimaeus. Because the Lord intervenes in his life and provides healing and hope to Bartimaeus. This sight for Bartimaeus is not just for Bartimaeus, certainly it is, but now how much more can he do to bring blessing to other people's lives? So what do you want? How would you answer? Jesus, I, I want to or I would like, I just want, what is it? In a little bit, in prayer, Steve, Pastor Steve will invite you to invite the Lord into those places where you want healing, you want a new beginning, where you desire uh, re resolution to questions potentially, whatever that is. And God in his mercy hears us. So my friends, today, let your heart be open. Pour out your heart before the Lord who loves you, who hears you, who stops and calls you to himself and says, what do you want me to do for you? And trust the Lord's grace is sufficient for you in your weakness, that God's grace is uh, surrounding you and filling you in this moment and inviting you to open your heart before him. May God bless us and keep us. Amen.